What up, you beautiful sons of bitches? Welcome back to the Trial by Error Variety Show podcast. This is episode number 75, featuring the music and interview with the fabulous alternative folk artist from Bandera, Texas, Mr. Dylan Tanner, and I am the captain of this ship, Chazel Dazzle. get too far into it let me give a huge thanks to easy deviance the man behind this and several of the intros for season three this is off of the album the nest and you can find it in our Bandcamp collection of course i'm getting kind of worried you guys what is gonna happen whenever we run out of guests I'm worried that as this progresses, that selfishly I'll lose access to people who are promoting stuff constantly because that was a part of their career. And now, sadly, a lot of those careers are on the back burner because of all this Rona. I gotta admit, uh, I don't like to show my cards, but it is getting increasingly harder to get guests of... uh, you know, the kind of stature and the kind of people that I want on this show as they're not doing much outward promotion. This is sort of a a cocoon phase for the arts world. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I'm trying. And I'm, I'm trying even harder than I've ever tried before because I really, really want this to happen. So, you know, let's be grateful for what we have, right? Right now, I have Dylan Tanner. A great dude, and I've actually been wanting to have him on the podcast for uh, <clears throat> quite some time. But uh, you know, he's working on music. He's got a family, doing live shows here and there. But a lot of people want to come on the show when they've got fresh tunes, and that he has. He's got a fresh little jam. We're gonna slide over this podcast like a piece of toast. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> really, uh, this was quite a delicious podcast because we changed up the questionnaire. For those following us on Instagram, you saw that I put a prompt out for questions and questions I received. Broad ones, personal ones. I'm going to use them all. And Dylan was a great test subject. So, sit back, relax, pry open that third eye, and please enjoy the show. All right. Well, I can, I can react. You. Yeah, that's weird, though. It doesn't have. OK, well, whatever. I'm little in the top of the screen and that's cool. Yeah, I am, too. As long as <laughs> okay, you feel belittled as well. Right out the <laughs> gate. Way to go, Skype. OK, I'm hydrated. And I'm primed. Cool. Hey, so you, you just got. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Cool. Just okay. checking. You just got. You're fresh off the, off the dumbbells or what? The kettle. <laughs> yeah. The kettle bell. Yeah, I am. Cool. I just so started this eight. little like training thing, like a eight week challenge deal. Mhm. Do you uh like print out sheets or do you just look on your phone? It's just a phone thing. It's an app and it like. It comes with a trainer, like it's someone uh, like meets with me every week via uh, video messenger or whatever, and 
goes over my my week with me and keeps me motivated. <laughs> wow. Do they work out with you or they just sit there and be like, yeah, man, keep going. And there's like, eat, <laughs> there's like eating nachos and stuff. They say, yeah, man, keep going. But they, uh, she also does like live workouts, like three times a week and you can join in and do the live workout over the video chat. And Okay. It's cool. A little, little interactive. It's not just like you're watching a YouTube video. And... Yeah. They're not just beating me down. And... That's cool. I tried, um, insanity one time. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did that. I did that for about two months. Is that like a video just, thing? Yeah, it was like, you know, P90X, like somewhere yeah, around I remember, there. You know, the, I remember that. the same. Yeah. The guy that does hip hop abs. You know? Yeah. <laughs> did you get some nice hip hop abs? I didn't. That's <laughs> no, why I stopped doing out. it. I did it for two months and I was like, this is not doing anything. And I'm I, I'm just, I didn't really change up my diet. I'm sure it, it wasn't my, it wasn't their fault. It was my fault. But <laughs> it wasn't their fault. It was insane to keep going at that, at that, uh, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's nope. Funny. Wasn't doing that. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, we've been, um, you know, during all of this, I think I've just, my health just plummeted uh, via stress. <laughs> like it's just gone out the window with stress. No matter what I was on top of it, when everything just came to a screeching halt for some yeah. reason, just ass shifted around here and just in the yeah. family in general. And, and it, obviously your friends, you see so much less of people. So it's kind of, it's kind of weird, right? That stress is ultimately the ultimate killer of all of us. And I imagine that something healthy, like a workout probably would save me uh, a lot of stress. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> By uh, yeah. throwing some endorphins on that fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or getting some of that stress out in a healthy way. Yeah, I don't do it healthy. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> okay. There's not a healthy way. Fortnite is not healthy. <laughs> and sitting in my room in the dark drawing, that's not healthy. Well, it's, it's good for your creative side. Mm, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you've been uh, you've been playing the drums? Bang, banging the, the old skins back there? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you played drums. Yeah, that's my first instrument. That's uh, ah. like if I'm ever gonna go like jam with a band, that's where I that's the instrument I run straight to. Because everyone else, I'm pretty incompetent, but drums I can hang. <laughs> and every band is missing a drummer at first. That's the <laughs> yeah. last and final piece, you know. Right. Yeah. It's I'm not so say hard. I'm a great drummer, but yeah. Like a you seem a little more open-minded than some of the drummers I've played with, where. I'm like, I'm not asking anything hard. Just don't play there. You know what I mean? Like, just stop. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's harder than it sounds. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> it really is. Drummers got to stay busy. They got to be doing something. And if they don't have, like, the twirl on their fingers or, like, you know. But yeah, <clears throat> I, who's your favorite drummer of all time? Um. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't paid much attention for like the last 10 years because I switched to like, you know, songwriting is where my primary focus is these days. But when I was growing up, like I was really into uh, Longinue Parsons from Yellow Card. He was like, I love Oh, him. yeah. They were uh, good. Neil Peart, Rush, of course. Okay. Had his poster on my wall. And, All right. Uh, what's his, uh, Carter Beaufort from Dave Matthews Band. He was, uh, those, are, those were my top three growing up. Wow. Okay. Two of them? <laughs> I didn't know the names, but I definitely know the bands. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, all great drummers. I think mine, my all-time favorite is uh, Travis Barker. Oh yeah, dude, him, that him dude. Too. Just style and oh, stylistically, sure. I don't think I've ever cared more when a drummer comes on than when. I, I no, I agree, man. Like, I, I don't care what he's doing. A lot of his beats when I was young, and they yeah. were never easy. Yeah, he started when he was like three years old, so that's when you gotta. You gotta hone in for yeah. you know. Do you are you good with your kids? Are they are they interested as far as that goes? And and are you re, like receptive to it? Oh, for sure, man. I mean, I love it. I mean, I try not to. I, I just want it to be like a natural thing, you know. Like mm -hmm. it's always around. I'm always around doing music. So they like the, the little ones. I have a one year old, a three year old, and a thirteen year old. And Keegan, the thirteen year old. He's been around it, you know, his whole life too, but never really latched onto it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
but the little ones, of course, they're, they're, they think it's super cool. You know, I mean, there's, he's Jonah's three years old, so it's just, he mm-hmm. loves coming here. And, well, both of them, they come in here and bang on everything. And heck yeah. When I get out the guitar, they get all excited and come up and hit it. And, <laughs> it's I, good to have a safe space yeah, for that, yeah. you know. Oh, for mm-hmm. sure. We've we got we, this room here with all my instruments in it. So I'm, I'll just ask them if we're bored. I'm like, hey, you guys want to go jam? And they're like, yeah. And we just come in here and bang on stuff and make a loud noise. That's that's a healthy way for sure. Yeah. I uh, I we used to kind of do that, and I don't I don't really have a, a studio space anymore. Every once in a while, we'll bust out the guitar, and they have ukuleles. They're mm-hmm. interested. But it's kind of like Mitch Hedberg said, like, I, I can play guitar, but I'm not very good because my teacher was me and I'm a yeah. shitty teacher. Right. And I'm like, I, I could never I tried taking lessons and I always felt like I was way behind on all my lessons. Like it was just going to be a waste of money. I have to do this on my own. And I'm trying to teach my kids and I'm just like, guys, I like I. I guess my way of teaching you is to tell you to do it yourself. Like, I don't know yeah. how to do it. I really like, don't know. A, yeah, here's yeah. the here's the pictures of, like, where your fingers go. That's what I did. And then yeah. I just, like, I played it, and, you know, it didn't sound right, and then it did. And, you know, and I, I don't know how else to explain that to them. I feel like I'm, yeah. I'm doing them a disservice because I really want to teach them, and I want them to have it. But, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll probably be doing some online lessons. Definitely. Right on, I would man. like to get them into some some ukulele lessons starting out, just simple chords, you know, yeah. simple progressions. Yeah. But, um, but I on one hand, I'm like, I really want them to have that just to have. Um, and then on the other hand, I feel like uh, given how everything is affected right now, I'm like, is this something that I should be teaching them or should we just straight up? turn our direction to self-sustained living or you know what i mean is there something more valuable that we should all be learning right now than a ukulele do you know what i'm saying like i'm like i want this because i've this is a way of life and it always has been however nobody's making money with ukuleles right now nobody's growing food with their ukulele right now it all just seems very fragile so maybe i'm doing myself a disservice by not learning alongside them some sustainable life I don't know, dude. I don't know. I have some deep I have some deep questions <laughs> tonight. They're really just all over the board questions. And I, I sat here with my nine year old and Stacy, my my ghost host, and we are just basically sort of um getting to the bottom of human nature. We're t- I'm I'm sort of tired of asking band questions. I've learned all I care to know. And so <laughs> my uh my aim is is to sort of get to know people you know because the reason i'm talking to most people is because i like their music their podcast their book whatever it is so i again i feel like i'm doing myself a disservice by not just digging deeper instead of just like okay so you put on an album in in 2014 and that was your debut when you're okay that's cool but uh i'm more interested and i'll just pick this is literally just a pile of We just put post-it notes out, and I'll just, I won't even look. I'll just pick one right off the top. (laughs) Uh Uh, Stacy, ghost host, Uh, do you believe in an afterlife, and if so, what kind? Dang, these are deep, man. Yeah. Well, for the longest time, man, my whole life, um, I wasn't, like, raised in any type of religious structure or or anything like that, like whatsoever. When I was like a teenager, my mom, you know, became more religious and tried to drag me into church and stuff. But I I always just really had a hard time with the monotony of it. And I thought, you know, I just, I just thought it was all BS, you know, and I felt that way for a long time. And I really just never, um, that, 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 I just felt that way. I, I always thought that like, you just, you died and then, and then that was it. You know, like, that's what I always thought. Like, um, I'm going to die. You're going to uh, get buried or I get burnt. And, and that's it. <laughs> um, but last August, I was going through this like particular time in my life and, um, I, where I was like, I felt like unhappy, you know? And I was like, man, why do I feel so unhappy? Like, what's wrong? You know, I've got awesome family, awesome wife, awesome kids, awesome, you know, house good job i got the gift of music i can share it with people 
like what do why am i not happy what the what the hell is wrong with with me what's up with that and so me and my wife chrissy were talking about it and trying to you know we, we were just discussing and we're like well let's figure it out man and so we started researching and, and like looking for books to to learn just to learn more about you know human nature and what it's all about and we both like st stumbled across the same book and like picked it and then came to each other and we we're like i think we should read this one and it was but it was like we found it like on our own like she found it and i found it and we we're like let's read this one and then we read it together and it just completely it changed my life dude like and it, it's a it's a spiritual book you know it's about the spiritual journey of of the human race and the last chapter in there is all about death and religion and how that relates together. And it just, I've never like heard anything more perfect than that. I was like, yes, this is it. This is, I found my religion, you know, it's not Christianity. It's not Buddhism. It's not any of that structured stuff. It's just spirituality, you know? And I mean, there's obviously there's a lot more to it than, than what I'm saying right now. Um, but I think that energy is always has been and always will be. And do I think that there is an afterlife? I think that there is always life. There's life before me and you were here and there's life after we're gone. Mm -hmm. And I think that energy transforms and lives forever. You know, I don't know if someday there's a big boom and I don't know how all the energy could disappear. I don't know. I'm not a scientist in that way. But um, do I think that it's a conscious afterlife? I don't think so necessarily because what is consciousness? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think that um, somewhere similar to that, uh, Bill Hicks said that we are all matter condensed into a slow moving vibration that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively and that we are never separate from God. Beautiful. We are the imagination of ourselves. Dude, there you go. We're yeah. all a part of it, you know? We're all the same. And, 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 yeah. and, and we build that off of the experiences that we go through. You know, we create mm -hmm. this identity that we hold so we stick to so like it says in the book like imagine you came home one day and you went to your door and there was another family living there and everybody was like who are you and you'd be freaked out like where's my family where's my dog this isn't my furniture because everything you know like you tie yourself to all of that but that has nothing to yeah. do with you that's not yeah. you that's not even real life that's yeah. just like those are just things yeah Hey, 
of you is your material goods you know yeah i feel the same way i i am so tied to stuff but i could watch it all burn too and uh and, and delight in some hard. way i mean don't get me wrong I get of course too, but i always have to zoom out i do this like little technique where if i'm starting to feel stressed about bills or you know money or or anything really sweat me i i do this thing where i like zoom out man i just try to zoom out and look at myself from the stars right or just like look at planet earth from really far away and i'm like look how small i am look how insignificant all of this stuff is that i'm worrying about man the fact that i'm here is a blessing and i should be happy whether i have a dollar or a million dollars or whatever i mean you this time here is what you make it period yeah that's so true I mean, a million dollars would be fun, but it goes, <laughs> it goes so quick. It doesn't, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I kind of have the opposite way of thinking. I'm almost, I almost have my head in the stars all the time. And in order for me to realize that I do have some significance, at least I have a role in my family. Um, I always kind of feel a little lost until I'm, I'm reminded that I'm just, here right now in this moment and the most that i can control is maybe within arm's reach you know yeah Yeah. so but that's uh you know that's where i go with that um yeah as far as an afterlife goes shoot man i want to believe them all you know i want to believe that every single religion every single sect every single idea is right in some way shape or form you know like you said, it's just life always. It may not be conscious life, but it's it's good to know that that this type of spirit that I have, this creative, ambitious, 
uh, persevering energy could be put into even just a flower that won't die that brings some you know living creature yeah. a, a food source or just a smile or you know what I mean like it, as long as as long as I can but that again that's just you know there's no evidence of it but I want to believe it very hard <laughs> makes yeah. me feel good makes me feel good and if I'm just imagining it oh another another question that's in this stack oh it's right here on top dude could this all possibly this is this is one that I question as well. And it's the seed has been planted by Rogan and Musk. Uh, could this all possibly be a simulation? And how often do things occur in your life that make it seem more like it is than not? A simulation of what? Mm, it- you're doing like uh, your imagination. Like, uh, for instance, I'll give you an example. I feel like my 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 voice will sync up to some random occurrence you know uh be it an electronic occurrence or somebody else in the room saying exactly what i'm saying at the same time which would be something obscure it wouldn't be like hello oh my god that guy said hello at the same time Mm -hmm. i'm saying we're talking about something like this and as i'm saying you know uh elon Musk says it's a simulation. Somebody across the room is saying that at the exact same time, almost as though there's like information being synced into our little simulation bodies. And we're all just like distributing that information via whatever, you know what I mean? Like there's so many occurrences on a daily basis where I'm like, did I just say exactly what the radio guy said? Yeah. And I don't listen to this radio. I just was tuning it and telling yeah. you about this road trip that we were taking. And, the and you know, the words are completely out of context, but they sync perfectly. That's just like, what is happening right now? And why is this, why is this vibration echoing in my space? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's very strange. And th- that's where, when, when the seed is planted that this might be a simulation, I have to stop for a second and go like, hmm, <laughs> is it, you know, we've all seen the Matrix. And is yeah. that just sort of a, a, a learning guide in a way that somebody has translated into cinema for us? You know, like we have all seen driver's edge or uh, yeah, like driver's ed videos or um, yeah. defensive driving videos. Matrix is just like that. Like we're all sort of sitting at our little pupils watching stuff like the Matrix and whatever the hell. I don't know, man. It just stops there. The trail stops there. There's just it sort of dead ends with my own insanity, I guess. You know? <laughs> well, to answer your question, I don't ever, <laughs> if I do notice that, I do not go that far into that, down that rabbit hole. <laughs> you just peer over it, step over it, move on with your life. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, I damn, that my was hand crazy. in it. We just yeah, said I'm the like, same thing at the same time. Yeah. Okay, what's next? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Sorry to squash that one so fast. Oh, well, hey, you know. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. All right. Top five most played albums in your household currently. Not like singles, because you know the kids will just throw on singles all day long. You'll hear like Baby Shark. I'm talking about like what holds weight when you put it on. It just plays, and the kids like it. Mama likes it. You know, but it's. Yeah. It's it's a household favorite. There's you get five of those. Five. Mm-hmm. Any genre. Okay. Um. Man, that's heavy. It's something that everybody likes. I mean, everybody likes them. But so, I'll be on it completely honest with you. These days, um, like I'm a big fan of Spotify, which is surprising for. Being a songwriter who releases music, and uh, people hate on it so much, but like my whole life growing up, I was like always searching for new music. Like whenever the Pirate Bay was a thing and Napster, I killed so many, I killed so many hard drives mm. trying to stockpile so much music, you know, and find it all. So when Spotify came out, I was like, oh my God, I can just go listen to anything, anywhere, and make my own playlist. So I'm a playlist madman. I have like, I have a playlist for like every genre and it has thousands of songs on it that I've handpicked over however many years, like they're never ending playlists that I'm always building. So that is primarily what I listen to or unless there's like some new favorites that come out 
um, I'll go listen to those albums, but I don't like keep them on repeat anymore. They're pretty much, I even, so I will answer your question. I even have a playlist <laughs> called new digs and okay. cause if I just like really like an album or a song and then I throw it into my, whatever, my indie rock playlist, I might not hear those songs again for another eight months because I have 3000 songs on it. Yeah. So I love I, that. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I have a new pl- uh, playlist called New Digs. So if I'm really digging something new, I just throw it on that one so I can get to it quicker. Anyways, so, okay. Some of my favorite albums. One would be Emotionalism by the Avid Brothers. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. really uh, a good one for me that I still listen to. Um, there's a band called Blind Pilot that I really like. Mm-hmm. And their album is called Three Rounds in a Sound. It was their their first release, and that one played a plays played a, a huge role in falling in love with songwriting. Um, one of my favorite songwriters is this guy named Mason Jennings, and he's got an album called Simple Life, okay. and it's all acoustic. It's um, just him and his guitar, the whole album, and I just love his songwriting. And uh, that's one of my favorites. There's a band called The Beautiful Girls, and they have an album called Learn Yourself that was really huge to me. And then I'm a huge Jack Johnson fan, like any of Jack Johnson records. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I know that that um, early one, um, Flake, I believe. Yeah, well, that, that's one of the songs off of it. It's off the, I can't remember what album it's on, but. Yeah. Lullabies? No. I had never heard guitar playing like that. Just, um, yeah. I mean, I you know, Brush tons Fire of different Fairy guitar Tales. players. Brush Fire Fairy Tales, this one. Yes, sir. Uh, Avid Brothers, that one holds weight around here. I Am Loving You, I think that album has been played 100 times on its own here. Yeah. Never heard That's Mason great. Jennings. I, I think I've heard the name Mason Jennings, but I'm really interested in that simple life for sure because – that's that's my life around here. I, I kind of for somebody to sit and make an acoustic guitar album just acoustic, that's like my demon sitting on my shoulder is like, you this isn't good enough. This is <laughs> yeah. not good enough, man. You need a banjo. You need something, you know. And it's just like, I, all right, I'll just put it back, you know, because <laughs> uh, I you know I'm too old to start a band or whatever whatever the demon says. But what, what do you mean, like like someone like you listening to a record? Like this isn't good enough, or you saying personally, like recording it and me, it, me recording it. Yeah. Okay. Me Man. recording it. Me too, dude. And yeah. Like, so small town rivers, like that, putting that song out was pretty scary to me because it's just oh. me, my guitar, and my harmonica. It's so good though. It's Thanks. so good. It's so catchy, but, and you know. It just it's uh man it's got such a good classic feel to it. As far as uh, it reminds me of an old Robert Earl Keane song or an old right. Charlie Robinson song, you know, it's great. Yeah. It's 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 hometown goodness, man. Homegrown I to, goodness. I was trying to capture the Bandera vibe in that one. Small town rivers ain't just for swimmers. Late night lovers, daytime sinners. Meet there at three, some poor kids fight in Brenner. Small town rivers ain't just for swimmers. Let's go floating before she runs dry. I heard this July might hit 105. Ice down the beer and air up the tube. And call up those girls from last night at the coop. Small town of rivers ain't just for swimmers. Late night lovers and daytime sinners. Misfits and outcasts drink Mickey's for dinner. Small town of rivers ain't just for swimmers. Have you seen that new sign says no parking here? Well, I say right after we finish our beer, we go dig it up. 
pull out a lighter Pour on the gas and we'll build us a fire Small town of rivers ain't just for swimmers Late night lovers, daytime sinners Heaven and hell ain't there for beginners Small town of rivers ain't just for swimmers Anytime we wound up too drunk to drive Parked at the bridge and we slept through the night We were just kids, nothing to lose Well I miss those days I don't know about you Still, right. even after even after I recorded, I was like, man, I could really hear just like some brushes and upright bass and on this, and yeah. it's so hard for me to hold back and not like call so, call call some guys and do that. But well, you know, budget plays an issue, and I'm like, dude, just like I've always wanted to put out an acoustic record, but I've always been like too insecure. Like, well, I'm not there yet, man. I'm not writing songs like that yet. I need other instruments to fill in space and make me sound better than I am. But mm -hmm. I don't know. And I played for my wife, and she's like, dude, it's great, man. Just put it out there. And I'm like, all right, I'll trust you. It one feels. Person, one vibe, one, one, yeah, one it's, it's all encompassing. Yeah, it's just the energy is all right. It's all right with it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like your songwriting's always been that way, man. It's always felt very genuine. You're, you're a romantic person, you know? <laughs> so uh, I can definitely see why your wife's a little biased. <laughs> right, uh, but really, I mean, if you if you're able to impress her after this long with just your acoustic and your harmonica, it's probably safe to trust her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, she'll tell me, dude. She I played songs for her for her before, and she like she'll help work out some with me too. You know, like we'll we'll work on them together, lyric wise. If I'm like, man, I just can't figure this one out, or I just can't, you know, she'll give she we'll sit there and work it out together, which is really like cool because I've never had a co-writing partner hmm. ever or like anybody helping with lyrics because it's super personal and yeah. I've always been scared of it but like she started throwing some stuff out there and I was like yeah okay I like that that's cool and just I think a lot of it has to do with me just opening my mind to other people you know yeah that's they yeah that's big on you because that's that's my hold up too is even if they're bandmates who I do trust yeah. I'm like, huh, you know, I think maybe you should put that in one of your songs. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> that sounds like a great idea for your next album, bro. Aren't you working on stuff? <clears throat> no, I just, I've been listening to this song, you know, because we practice it a lot. And I just thought, like, <laughs> it, it, this line would be really good in here. And, like, yeah, that's great. And then you look around, like, I don't have a band, you know? So, like, <laughs> I feel like a dick. Uh, moving on. So, let's see what else we got here. These are fun questions, right? They yeah. they open little rabbit holes of them of their own. Okay. Every major city needs less of what? And every small town needs more of what? Oh, every major city needs less. Well, probably crime in general, but I want to narrow in on like violent crimes. Mm. Yeah. That's just where my head went. Small yeah. towns need more music venues. Mm -hmm. Both of those really actually kind of heartbreaking. And what you just yeah, said. I know, right? <laughs> I think you're going to say some obvious stuff like uh, Starbucks. They need less Starbucks. Yeah. Violence is out of control right now, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know it is. <laughs> and as far as small town venues, dude, the wave of stuff that I saw this week. I kind of just blocked out until you said that. But mm -hmm. all the places that are closing I know. Um, that have survived this long, the seven months, and you thought, okay, they've made it this long. Maybe they can make it. The, maybe they can make it till the vaccine. But they're just done. They no, who, Nobody's who, allowing them to defer payments, you know? Who have you seen that stood out to you? Any venues that uh, you're like, oh, man, that one hurt? Oh, uh, the Portland Music Hall in Maine. 
that was like one of the only music venues in Maine that brought in all genres. So people would come from, it was like their Austin, you know what yeah. I mean? And so that's like basically their stubs closing down the yeah. Portland music hall. And I, although I'd never been there, we had actually planned to go there this Christmas for P dang Christmas. And so yeah. they're not even going to have that venue when they probably won't have the, you know, the P dang Christmas, but, um, you know, stuff like that, that, I mean, just kind of the unforeseen um, closures of yeah. all, all the unforeseen consequences of all of this politicizing a sickness and illness that that is easily controlled with some regulations and not, yeah. you know, it was just, uh, you know, it's tragic. It's tragic how much how much uh, has art has been affected by this, in other words, you know. Yeah museums and everything i mean really remember in the recession in like 2008 everybody downsized yeah and they didn't ever like re-downsize after 12 years we've just gotten used to you know everything is smaller i mean like crews are smaller you like you know robots are mopping floors and yada yada yeah now it's even smaller you know what i mean like now you go anywhere and there's like one register open and it's all self checkouts. Yeah. You know, where did those cashiers go? Where did yeah. those people with jobs and benefits and social security, you know, I mean, it's just beyond art. Yeah. It's just insane to me how it all just became something like this. I don't know. I, I'm like afraid, you know, not afraid, but hesitant to talk about it because everyone's got their opinions. You know? Me too. I, I, me too. I never want to offend anybody. Of course. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, everyone has a right to their own opinion, but, me and you are are in you know small town Texas, and that's a lot mm -hmm. different than some other areas. But yeah, like I don't know. It seems like it's a little blown blown up to me, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, by by all standards, it's blown up. You know, um, because because it's not just about a sickness; it's about who's right and who's wrong. And I, I feel agree. like if there's two things that we can do, um. You know, we wash our hands more and we wear a mask while we go out just as a courtesy. Yeah. If those are the only two things, then I think we should open stuff up and, and just, you know, hey, give each other room. Like, we need to start giving each other room, but we can still eat together. We can still do this stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, and it's just scary how it still hasn't gone back. Like, we kind of thought, okay, people are going to get it, you know. But then you yeah. just have, like, it's still – like it kind of has been in every scenario. It's one extreme or the other. You have like people who are just like, fuck this and just partying and yeah. becoming these huge hot spots mm -hmm. of, and, and then you have these people who are trying really hard to just everything they do now is remote, but they're still trying to live their lives and, and make money or just keep sane, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I feel blessed. I honestly feel very blessed through all of this because I've somehow kept my sanity and kept working and yeah. and also took a knee to it. Like, I really don't know. I don't pretend to know. And like you said, everybody's got an opinion. But I'm like, my opinion is that I just I've stayed out of all of this. I see wear a mask. I put on a mask, yeah. you know, and I yeah. and I just and I, it, but if there was if there was a music festival uh, in September, like there was supposed to be for Utopia Fest, I would be there. But yeah. I would be camping. And then when I went out into a public area, I would wear my mask mm -hmm. and I would social distance. Yeah. You know, it would stop me. You play safe. But it's yeah. just like the, everything is still shut down. And that is that's the only thing that's really kind of got to me recently. That's yeah. that's become sort of stressful beyond my my uh, circumstantial. I, I can't help it. I can't do that. I can't help anything. Yet it's stressing me out. Yeah. So. So I have to zoom in. <laughs> yeah. I haven't burned yeah, any bridges. It's blow over eventually, though, man. I mean. Oh, yeah. It will. And that's why I wanted to keep doing this. the election, right? They're just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I watch it all turn as soon as we get an answer. Because that's all it is. It's just, it's up in the airness, man. We can't handle it. Nobody can handle it. Yeah. Speaking of that, here's my next question. Aliens. <laughs> Extra <laughs> extraterrestrials where do you stand which way do you lean and if you do believe in extraterrestrials what evidence is the evidence that brought you to like okay this could be legit right here <laughs> yeah <laughs> floor is yours 
go. Uh, <laughs> these are hard questions for me, or this one is, because <laughs> I just, like, I don't think about a lot, a lot of stuff that, like, that I can't control or that, like, I'm not sure about. I'm usually just like, fuck it, I don't know, man. Maybe I'll find out someday. That's Even like when you're looking out at them stars, man. <laughs> That's what? Even when you're looking up at them stars, trying <laughs> to figure out who you are. <laughs> yeah, even when I'm looking up at the stars. Uh, mm. I mean, so I, you know, I really have no idea, and I'm completely okay with that. That's my mm. answer. I have no fucking clue. There's been evidence. Yeah, you know, I've watched documentaries, and I've been to Roswell. When I was a kid, if I went now, it might be different. I also know that I, I never know who I can believe, whose story is true, or who's just full of shit. And so I'm okay with that and not knowing. That's my answer. I'm sorry, that's not more fun. Hey, I kind of lean that way myself. Um, I'm the same with ghosts. Like, yeah. I want to believe, but until I see it, I just I've been tricked and lied to too many times to yeah. to you know what I mean like I know they're still making alien movies they still got to carry this agenda you know they're still selling stickers in Roswell t-shirts and it's like it, it it's all just t-shirts man it's all it is it's all to sell t-shirts do you think there's but, a trick to rest your life yeah I do I do and I think that we have known that forever I think yeah. that I think that uh, beyond extraterrestrial life, I possibly believe that there are different layers of dimensions that we just can't dig through, see through, communicate through. But there are beings beyond, you know, higher higher beings beyond us in in the same space, just different dimension, able to communicate or reach into our realm to sort of study us and analyze us. And again, it just feels like this could happen. And I want to believe that because I feel like, again, the same reason I want to believe there's a ghost is that there's a possibility of an afterlife. Yeah. If, if you're saying, oh, I came to this house and nobody's lived in it for 40 years because the everybody keeps saying it's this they see the same guy here who smokes a pipe and that was the same guy who lived here a hundred years ago who's never left and it's real that means that that energy that is just ever present somehow is in that dimension communicating with this one if that's if that is real if the people who are testifying to these things are real I don't know them. And those people also wrote books and talked to journalists and sold their stories. You know what I mean? So once you put money on it, you can wipe your ass with it. I don't care. Exactly. So it hasn't happened to me. So I can't I can't say I believe it. I want yeah. it to happen. I want to yeah. be spooked. I want to yeah. go to an old hotel and be like see a little girl in the mirror and look back and she's not there. And then I'll be like, dude, I'm going to call Dylan. <laughs> 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 no, it's real, dude. It's real. And yeah. then you can call me full of shit, and then I'll send you to that hotel. That's how it'll work. <laughs> First time I saw her face, my heart began to race. Fell through out of space. When she first said my name Sometime down the line I finally got wise Went down on my knee Asked her to marry me I felt high On her love I felt high Oh
cult was crazy rich and he bought like thousands of acres in some small town and so and they all wear like maroon robes Uh uh-huh and And they like like, roll the red carpet out yeah yeah like imagine bandera dude all these people in bandera are like dude this cult is coming here from india with (laughs) with five thousand you know indian people in purple robes and they just show up and they kind of like take over this little town They, they even like move they start taking the jobs. The, the the cult leader starts buying all the businesses in the town and literally just taking over the town. Dude. Oh, uh, country something, right? Yes. I swear. Yes. Uh, dang Man, it. there's yeah. too many. See, I have too Here. many in my head. That's my problem. Well, I'm going to Google it right now so any listeners are like, what is it, dude? Tell us. Right on. We, we self-produce here at TBE. Every guest is responsible for producing their own content. <laughs> and looking doing their own fact checking so that is not on me just so dylan knows that dylan knows <laughs> wild wild country wild wild country yeah i did i saw the first episode of that it's pretty freaky yeah um and and it was uh i i enjoyed it it was interesting i'm gonna have to finish it then because i watched episode one and then um i think around that same time i started watching another documentary oh I'll be gone in the dark about the Golden State Killer. That's, so an that's HBO. another thing. Is I really get in like give me a couple if you want. like write I'll write down some of yours, man. My, is, my wife um, is not like she does not. She has a hard time with like murders and anything mm-hmm. with stuff like that. So yeah, I don't watch that stuff ever. Although like I really uh-huh. get interested in that stuff. Like all of these, uh, they're, they're always on Netflix. People are talking about them. I never oh, watch yeah. them because I watch. I usually watch stuff with my wife. Yeah, she gets you don't like that dark energy, huh? 
Yeah, well, she goes to sleep and then has bad dreams and it just messes. She doesn't like it. Anxiety, dude. I'm the same way, but I it's love exactly those dreams. It's, it's anxiety. I love yes, those exactly. dreams, dude. I like in my in my sleep, I'm like running away from people and getting away, though. You know what I'm saying? And like, <laughs> yeah. it's like in your dream, you can't die. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's just all kinds of crazy shit. I I tend to go like to the same places in my dream. There's like this old resort and it's like. It's never tops on the cars. It's like Mad Max kind of, I guess. I don't know. And um, But the scenario is always different, but I always come out on top. Always, dude. And I'm like head full of that. Like Ozark. I love Ozark. That's a true crime. Or not true crime, but it's a, a crime show with Jason Bateman. I'll Be Gone in the Dark, though. That's the documentary. So I'll, even Pat- I'll, I'll yeah. Be Gone? Uh-huh. Yep. The writer of the book that the series is based off of... <clears throat> She had spent so many years of her life investigating this crime that was basically a cold case. They couldn't find this particular killer who they actually thought were three different people, like a ramsacker, a rapist, and a killer. They were all the same person who were just on different parts of his life doing different sprees, all the while being in law enforcement. And this no, all happened just, like so you just in the, told me the whole the, the end no. of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Um the amount of escalation, all of this stuff, this one writer and self-proclaimed sleuth had figured out on her own and then like basically turned it over to detectives and they solved the case together using DNA and everything else. Yeah. So, so she um, wasn't like a detective or anything. She was just a writer. Like, she was a writer. In, yeah. Like cold cases and stuff like that. A journalist. Yeah. And oh, cool. uh, in her own right, you know, and um, she died before they ever found this guy, oh, but they man. did find him. So she never got to see the beauty that came from getting this guy oh, behind cool. bars and, and all yeah. the the victims being able to come together for the first time and realizing, you know, they have like a sisterhood almost. Um, it's it's just a really powerful documentary. It's a Netflix doc that I saw the other day that will blow your mind is something that got swept under the rug in American history. It's called tread, like t- like tank tread, bulldozer cool. treads to be exact. This guy basically, I, he believes that this town is conspiring against him, whether he's got some sort of delusion or whether it really is happening and it's being swept under the rug. Nobody really can tell. I guess the secrets kind of died with this guy. But uh, he went off the wall, man, and created a battle tank and essentially destroyed an entire town in Colorado. Oh, and the reason why it didn't make national news is because Ronald Reagan died that day. And that became like anything anybody would talk about for two weeks. This whole town was like demolished because of this guy's delusions. It's fascinating. Fascinating. It's horrifying, but it's fascinating. Right. If you listen to podcasts, I have some really good true crime podcasts I can I can turn you on to as well. Have you ever listened? Have you ever heard of or listened to the Working Songwriter podcast? Uh, the Working Songwriter. Yeah, um, that's uh, there's a, a songwriter Joe Pug, and he interviews just a bunch of. I mean, I don't know how many episodes he has now. He's been doing it for quite a while, but uh, just interviews with with songwriters and. I really enjoy that. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, definitely. I like uh, stuff good, like a sound check, you know? Yeah. Good, good conversations. Uh, there's another one called, um, oh, what's it called? Oh, wow. Lucinda Williams, David Ramirez, Ray Wiley Hubbard. He's yeah, had some good guests. He does it really well, too. Um, it's just, Ooh, the, yeah, Fruit Bats. Man. Oh, song song exploder. That's okay. really cool too, man. If you're like, if you're that, that's like pretty cool for people that are more like, well, into like the technical side of recording and recording music and songwriting. It really like it's they they get a, an artist and they just kind of tell you all about one song, and they'll hmm. tell you how they wrote it, what it's about. And then they'll they'll even like they'll say so this guitar part I was playing it like this and then so and so told me to play it with a mm. some random whatever you know play it and then they'll just play the guitar part so they solo different instruments and they say if you if you listen right here so and so dropped his keys 
and we didn't it was, but it was such a good take we didn't take it out so we just if you like really focus and listen you can hear johnny drop his damn keys in the background you know? <laughs> but they solo different stuff yeah. in the songs and, and like really dig deep into how it was recorded and all that which is fun to listen to dude that is really cool yeah i love stuff like that i'm all about that bts baby <laughs> yeah screenshot this podcast and hashtag bts if you're into no i don't have that kind of following yet but that'd be real cool you know what i mean it's like one yeah. day we're one day me and my audience we're gonna create a hashtag by golly well shit dylan you made it through my intensely personal and uh very universal Questions. Very universal. It was a lot more universal than I expected. Uh, it, I I, wanted, I told everybody to keep them broad. I said I had the timeline. I was like ready. Okay, I started. I picked. I got. I learned the guitar when I was 18. I wrote my first song when I was 19. It was called blah blah blah. And I had the timeline all ready to tell you. And then you're like, hey dude, what do you think about aliens? Yeah, yeah. Save, save it for the memoir, line? dude. Save it for the memoir. Okay. <laughs> Uh, awesome, man. I've enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, dude, it's been a long time coming. I, I think we last time I asked, you're like, I have some stuff on the horizon. Just wait. And yeah. then and then it just, you know, the world changed. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> but here we are, dude. We held true to it. We're, we're together at last. Sure. All right, brother. Well, uh, take care of yourself and take care of your family. And I guess we'll see you when we're able to leave our bunkers. And, yeah, man. and hang out again yeah I'm looking forward to it man thanks again for having me yeah man see ya alright peace and now it's time to get current with Cam yo what are San Antonio Texas XC Cabaret Club man grabbed the AK-47 started shooting up the place over a dispute inside maybe they were charging too much I wasn't there shot by security guard he was dead when police arrived oh my god San Antonio clears hotel space for hurricane evacuees. Enjoy it! Go back where you came from! Order! Horoscope? No one cares. I don't know how many of you people believe in astrology. I think it's a bunch of bullshit myself. According to recent studies, they found uh, Trump and Hitler both drank water. <laughs> Yikes. This is America, you dumb son of a bitch, okay? Conservationist West Matthewson, 68 years old, mauled to death by two rare white lions who raised since cubs. Demi and Tanner were the lioness's names. They also mauled a farm worker to death in 2017. Lions 2, humans 0. I am never going to financially recover from this. A spokesman for the conservation park said they will not be put down. You know what? You're fired, okay? You didn't follow proto. Vietnam man Nguyen Van Chien, 92 years old, is coming up on his 80 years of no haircuts, dude. 16 foot long locks. Damn! Right on, man. Friends don't let friends get haircuts. Back to you, Chad. All right. Thank you, Cam. I feel very caught up. That's all the news that I'm going to need and all the news you're going to need, my friends. Let's get back to our show. Closing it out with that Brock Berrigan, baby, off that Utah album. If you guys don't know who Brock Berrigan is, go check him out. I don't know what he looks like other than he looks like a chicken, man. Easy deviance, Brock Berrigan. I mean, could you have cooler intro and outro music? Nah, you can't. Find me, find me cooler intro, outro music. It doesn't exist until season four. That's right. I got some big plans for season four, my peeps. Go check out our Instagram. I have released the image for season four. The logo, man. The feel, the vibe. It's all there. If you don't follow us on Instagram, really, that's like the one place to stay in touch. Post a lot of stuff up in stories. I try to keep you guys laughing as well as keep your hearts and your minds open, even when I'm not publishing podcasts, because that's just the kind of person I am. I'm, I'm sort of thinking about humanity all the time. 
I recently did a podcast with Jonathan Beecham, the Paradise Now podcast. I believe I was episode four or five. It was just a really good sit down, man. I, I vented one day after work, really. That's what it felt like. I got off work and I just began to sort of like unwind right there, talking to an old buddy. We talked about the state of the world. We talked about the state of our home lives and it got a little deep. Like something's about to happen, but I don't know what. And if that's the kind of thing you're into, then by golly, go check out the Paradise Now podcast. As promised, I do have the episodes for stickers with stories coming out very soon. Still working on the concepts, I guess the logo and the presentation of that. It does mean quite a lot to me, so I don't want it to fall to the back burner, the wayside. I want it to be presented just right. But until then, my friends, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Do whatever you can to follow the golden Hey, uh, also, I'm going to send you out on one more song, right? Boom, bonus. This is Beside Me off of the Dreamer album by our boy Dylan Tanner.
guys so much again for listening. It means so much to me. It means so much to the artist. Please go support these artists on Bandcamp, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you can. These people make a living making music for you to just enjoy most of the time for free. So every little bit helps. Thank you.